Welcome back. So the next test I want to do is kind of a simple one. I just want to test if that button right here is available. And when I click the button, I want to make sure that I actually go to the route slash product slash add, right? So it's it's a, a very simple test again, it's, but adding the router link to your code is a bit more complex. So we're just going to start off this lesson with just finding the button and seeing if the button is available, right? But you also have to note that there are other, other buttons in here as well, right? There's another button right here if you have products. There's a button down here with a click that kind of calls the delete product with some delete information in here. So we need to make sure that this button exists on the page and that it has the plus sign in there. And we don't have to look uh, for these guys right now because we don't have any products yet. We'll get back to that later. So how do we do this? How do we actually get the button and this specific button and actually try to click it to see if we can route to the right um, link right here? So step one, let's jump into our test. And I already did a bit of work right here because I wanted to explain it this time instead of writing the code but while we talked about it. So I've made actually 20 tests here now and let's just dive into the first one right here which is on line 55. Let's scroll down there. This line right here right below the H2 test that we did last lesson. I've made a small test right here that pretty much just says there should minimum be a button that has a plus sign, right? There should as a minimum be a button on the page. Now what I've done is pretty simple. You can go in again and use the query all this time and instead of last time I used the query just to get the first H2, now I'm saying query all, which means on a debug element, I can go and find all elements that are of the type button, very simple stuff. So now I have a link, um, a description right here for all the different buttons uh, that are actually available right here. And um, let's just call them button description or buttons. That's a better name, buttons like this. There we go. So now I have a list of buttons right here and I can use that list of buttons and pretty much the first test I'm doing is just saying there should be minimum one button always because right now I don't allow that this guy is removed, right? So that button needs to be there. So that's the one button that's a minimum. But if I have 10 products, there'll still be buttons there, right? So now there'll still be 10 buttons here and one here, so that gives 11. So that's why I do the test this way. The first one, I just say, as a minimum, we need a single button in here. And I actually even go in and say it needs to be a plus button but I actually don't test that until the next test. So there should be a minimum of one button on the page that should actually be the text. So that's the first test right here. And I'll jump to the second one because I wanna show you guys now that we have tested, again, I'm trying to make a single test for each area. I'm, I'm trying not to put too many tests into a, simple, into a single area because I could in principle just grab this guy and put him down here, right? And have two tests down here. That's also a possibility. But I don't want to do that. I want to make the test very specific for one single case, one single scenario right here. And this case is just testing if there's at least one button on the page, where this case is actually about that one button. The first button on the page should have a plus sign. So let's see how we do that. Again, first I go and get the button. In this case, I just get all buttons again. And I select the first one because as I said, I want the first button on the page. So that's why I'm saying, give me the, the zeroth position in the array of buttons which is actually the first button right here. Give me the native element of that guy. And then I'm doing something very specific. I'm saying I want that element to be of the type HTML button element. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I can be type safe now. And that means that when I do native button dot, I can actually start getting all the things that a button in HTML can provide for me, right? For instance, text content, right? That is now available as a property right here, where if you guys remember earlier, I couldn't find this unless I went into the actual browser and kind of the debugger and stuff like that. But now because I changed this into the type of HTML button element, notice that I set the type before I actually set the value right here, then I know that this content right here is now available on the button and that means it can help me out with type safety. And I'm just asking that that should actually contain the plus in the center. If that is the case, then I know I have a minimum one button and I know that first button is actually with a plus sign. So that was two very simple button tests. Now you can do anything on buttons that you normally can. You can do click events and stuff like that. We'll dive into that in the next lesson. This lesson, I just want to show you guys how easy it is to actually get the button and actually use the HTML button element. Now you have a, a elements for everything. Like here's a head element, right? H2, I just used that one. There's elements for everything you can see on a page. Span elements, um, div elements, everything is these small helpers right here will help you write that code. So that was two very simple uh, tests right here to kind of see that there was a button on the page and a minimum one button with a plus sign. So that's it for this lesson. See you next time. Have fun.